to do today is we're going to look at something a little different. Uh, it's probably one of the uh, uh, most uh, sadly neglected and underutilized portions of our sea crew chief, and that being the uh, motor modeling and uh, simulation of uh, acceleration versus time. So we're going to try and remedy that. Uh, one of the big shortcomings has been lack of information, lack of data on, uh, on the motor performance itself. Um, so we are trying to rectify that now. What we have here is a uh, flywheel dyno. Uh, this is the Eagle Racing MD2 dyno. Um, uh, what it allows you to do is uh, run the motor through the entire RPM range accelerating a little flywheel. We have a flywheel here uh, with an optical encoder in it that uh, uh, measures the RPM of the motor and in doing the acceleration of the uh, flywheel we can take that information and we can calculate the torque and power output of the motor. Um, in addition what the uh, uh, dyno measures is the voltage these connections here have voltage sensing leads on them <clears throat> so you measure the voltage that's coming into the ESC uh, you also measure the uh, current to the motor so knowing all those pieces of information you can also calculate the efficiencies of the motor so we have a 13.5 Tekken Gen 2 motor here uh, we have a Novak GTV3 ESC and just a two cell lipo powering the whole thing. Now I've also got the dyno plugged into my laptop so what uh, that allows me to do is when we do the dyno run the data gathered by the dyno I can uh, save to the laptop and then we can import that into RC Crew Chief to uh, uh, do the analysis we need to do. So let's uh, get on with a little dyno run here so Oh, I should also point out this dyno is limited to 30,000 RPM. Uh, reason being, um, they felt that was a good upper limit because uh, when you uh, hear this dyno run, uh, you might understand why they limited it to 30,000 RPM. So you're pretty much restricted to 13.5 uh, turn motors and less. Uh, and you can't really run anything with uh, a boost. Okay, so let's do a run here. And here we go. So that was a full run. Uh, the dyno did shut off at 30,000 RPM. I have the, uh, I think the timing set on this motor is around uh, 30 degrees. That's the timing mark on the motor. It's actually, the real timing is actually greater than that. Um, so the dyno did shut off at the 30,000 RPM limit and as I'm sure you can hear from that it uh, is uh, fairly substantial speed. So what we're going to do now, I've recorded that data into my laptop. I'm going to download that into RC Crew Chief and we'll show you what we can do with that information. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Uh, what we're going to do now is import that file that we just uh, recorded on the uh, flywheel dyno into our Crew Chief. So let's open the motor manager. Uh, we want to go over here to the dyno analysis and then we just want to click on load dyno file. So this is the file that was recorded. Uh, the um, dyno uh, program just calls it save so it's very useful to give it an appropriate name so I've just called it Tekken 13.5 and the motor was set at 30 degrees. Uh, the reason you want to give this a good name as well is because the default model name is going to be assigned as, uh, as the same as the file name so it can save you a little time uh, entering names and making names and so on. So let's open that. So the first thing you see here is you just get a raw data listing of uh, all the uh, data that was recorded in the uh, file. Uh, so first you have to select the header row. So sometimes different file formats, you may be, this header row may be the third line down and the first uh, line of data may be the fourth line down. So this just allows you to select it. So in our case it's one. 
and the first row of data is row 2. So we're all good there, so let's just import that data. Now we have to tell the program which uh, line of or which column of data to use for the various uh, parameters we need. We need to know time, voltage, current, and RPM. So in this case, first column is time. RPM is the fourth column. As soon as I click on that, you'll see we get a display here now of the uh, RPM on the y-axis and time. So this is the actual acceleration of the uh, flywheel that we just uh, test that we just ran. So and also we need to know the voltage and the current. So once we selected all those, the next thing we need to do is select the range of data that we want to use to to calculate the uh, uh, performance of the motor. So all you do is you just click and drag to highlight the area. We're going to go all the way to the end in this case. Uh, in some cases you'll see the the accelerator or the flywheel accelerates very rapidly and then the curve flattens out. There's no point in taking a whole section of flat constant speed data. You just want to get the uh, uh, data where the speed of the uh, motor is actually changing. So the other thing, uh, we have some dyno parameters here that you need to enter to uh, uh, make sure the calculations are correct. Uh, there's a wiring allowance. Uh, an on resistance for the ESC because the ESC is just 100% on, it's not uh, not uh, pulsing at all, uh, and the uh, flywheel inertia. So in this case the flywheel inertia is 24 kilogram meter millimeter squared. If you need to calculate it for a dyno, there's a little inertia calculator here. So you just have to enter the weight, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, radius, and that will give you an estimate of the uh, inertia of the flywheel. In our case we don't need to do that, we've already done that calculation. So we've got everything done here, so all we need to do now is just click on the Dyno Calculate button and there you can see the blue line is the power versus RPM and the red line is torque versus RPM. So that's all we need to do here for the Dyno analysis. Now, now we need to uh, create a motor model. So let's just click on that. It's going to switch us over to the Build Motor tab and it's going to fill in the model name as I already mentioned the file name will be used as the model name uh, you know in addition to this I would probably add in here gen 2 so that you know that it's the generation 2 uh, TP motor not the gen 1 uh, first thing here we need to do is we need to look at a simulated voltage source because we need to have the the voltage that we're using for the to create the model uh, needs to be similar or the same in an ideal world as the uh, uh, voltage that was supplied to the motor during the test. So what the program does is it does a, uh, a curve fit to the actual voltage versus current data that we recorded during the test. So you can see here the red line is a straight line simulation of the voltage data and you can see that the, the numbers are kind of fluctuating and oscillating back and forth on either side of the line so that's uh, not a bad representation it's never going to be perfect uh, there's you know, doing all this stuff there's there's always compromises to be made so so that's a pretty good representation the reason you can adjust this if you need to you know you can adjust your your no load voltage up and down you can see that just moves the line vertically up and down uh, if you change the internal resistance of the voltage source, that changes the slope of the line. So in our case, we're just going to leave it as it was. We're just going to leave the prediction as it was. It looks like it's pretty good, uh, pretty good numbers. So now you can see here what we have is the blue line is the actual dyno data. That's the current, that's the efficiency, and that's the torque output. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get our red lines, which is our simulated model to match as closely as we can with the actual test data. So these changes that we have to make here are sort of listed in order and this is the kind of order that you want to go through them. So the first uh, thing we need to do is set our KV value uh, out to where we're actually at. The program does do an estimate but sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good. So let's let's go let's try around there. 
And the next thing we want to do is we want to adjust the shape of our, our current versus RPM curve. So you can see here we've got a very straight line and we need to have some curvature in it. So we got a curvature factor here that we can we can add some curvature to the line. Uh, so now we got some fairly reasonable curvature and now we need to adjust the slope of this. So if we just click on here and just start adjusting the slope, you can see we're, we're getting up closer, closer, closer and we probably put too much curvature into it. The other reason that you, or the other way you can see if you put too much curvature into it, you can see here that our efficiency curve, we're not getting all the way out to the uh, 30,000 RPM and same here. So that means we put too much curvature into it. So we need to reduce that until we get to the point where uh, the RPM doesn't start reducing on our model. So now we need to try and get our current line a little bit better. So we need to lower the slope of the current. And the other thing you can see here is that our current is a little high at this end, so you can adjust your no-load current here to bring that back down that also increases the efficiency. So now we've got our current is fairly closely matched, our endpoint uh, RPM is fairly closely matched. Uh, now we need to try and adjust our power and torque curves. So the first thing you want to look at is your peak power where that's occurring. You can see our peak power here is too low compared to where it's showing up on the dyno. So by using this uh, the torque constants we can adjust that. So this KT damp value uh, will essentially move the uh, peak power to the right and left. So if we move it to the right, it's going to increase. So now we're seeing we're getting close to the right numbers. We're actually very close. So our peak power is at the right point. Our curve coming down on the top end and the other thing you need to remember when we're doing all this is is really what your your operating range is from one third RPM up to probably three quarters of the peak RPM. So you want the the match to be as close as you can in that range. Um, well maybe from maybe from a quarter, let's say from a quarter to three quarters is your sort of operating range where you're typically running. Uh, the other thing you want is you want to get your <laughs> your torque versus RPM as close as you can. Efficiency, if there's something that you need to sacrifice, uh, efficiency would be the first thing I would do. Uh, but I always try and get everything as close as I possibly can. So let's see if we can get this a little bit closer. Uh, our, let's just put a little bit more KV into it that out a little better so we've got a better match down at this end now our uh, current is fairly close out here but we could probably reduce this a little bit more and that's going to bring our efficiency up a bit so there we're pretty close so I would say that's not a bad match you know we got a pretty good uh, torque power current and efficiency match there. So I would go ahead and save that. Uh, you can add some notes in here. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of parameters that affect uh, how uh, the you know, the accuracy of the simulation. Uh, so I always put in which ESC I'm using, um, the motor and the motor timing values. So let's just go ahead and click Add to Library. And there it's added to the library. So if we go to the motor model page now, you can see here this is the model that we just created. Uh, a very useful thing is you run the uh, dyno at different timing values and you can see exactly what happens with the uh, uh, power, torque, and efficiency as you change the timing values. So I'm just going to go through one that I've already got in here, and let's have a look and see what we find. 
So this is a few powers, 13.5. So we're going to go from, we can compare up to four different versions or four different uh, change this one to plus 2.5. So there you can see these were four different dyno runs and four different models were created uh, as a result of those dyno runs. So you can see our peak power point is moving out. We're getting significantly more RPM. Uh, torque, we're getting more torque out there. The big change here, you can see we're really getting a lot of current uh, draw on the motor when we get out to the higher RPM values. And also, as our uh, timing is increasing, our efficiency is dropping off. So this can be used very, uh, very usefully, or this can be a very useful tool to uh, start looking at your acceleration versus timing or gearing uh, to see, you know, where your heating problems are occurring and what you can do to uh, maybe change your gearing or your timing settings, uh, not sacrificing a whole bunch of speed, uh, but saving yourself uh, uh, problems with uh, overheating the motor. Okay, so that's a quick tour of the new version and uh, stay tuned, we'll do some more uh, videos here on how to uh, uh, do some simulation with the acceleration versus time portion of the program.